Yeah, good morning, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, I've um, had an opportunity this morning and last night to have a bit of a play around with the audio amplifier, and um, I think I've gotten to, uh, to a point now where I'm quite happy with it and um, and are ready to solder it up. But before doing so, let's just take a, uh, a bit of a look through the circuit itself and where we got to. So, as alluded to earlier, um, I wanted to use both the uh, NE5534, um, a low noise operational uh, amp, uh, in conjunction with, in conjunction with, I should say, an LM380 audio amp chip. Um, and this is the circuit I've settled on here. So um, the output here, or the input I should say, is it will be the output of the um, ADE-1 or the uh, SPL-1 acting as the product detector. Uh, and coming through this 47 microfarad capacitor here. Um, I used 47 microfarads, which we'll look at before, uh, because I wanted um, its capacitive reactance at the lowest frequency uh, being 300 hertz. So remember our audio frequencies will be 300 hertz to 2.7 kilohertz uh, to be sort of uh, on or about um, 10 ohms. Um, I wanted it to be that, that low there because pin 2 is a virtual earth so therefore, the, um, the mixer here will be seeing effectively this resistor um, being its termination. So I wanted that to be around 50 ohms, or 51 is the nearest um, value uh, resistor there, to make sure that that product detector was adequately terminated in a, a 50 ohm resistor. This capacitor um, is working in combination with um, this resistor here to form a low pass filter, um, with the idea of um, having this amplifier here be um, in terms of max gain between 300 hertz and uh, 4 kilohertz. Um, so in other words setting uh, the minus 3 dB point which we'll look at in a sec to be 4 kilohertz. So again I don't want this to be super high fatality. Um, so if any sort of products coming out of our product detector which are beyond our speech range, uh, i.e. that sort of 3 kilohertz odd max frequency I don't want to pass through or at least pass through with a lot less uh, amplification. Anyway so moving on uh, the 5534 here um, that input is going through to the uh, inverting input and the output has this minus RF so in this particular configuration here uh, the gain is minus RF over RN is the um, amplification factor for uh, this particular setup the uh, non-inverting input is tied to half-wave between um, the VCC rail and Earth, just using two 10k ohm resistors there. Um, reasonably arbitrary values, um, it's just a voltage divider, and just sort of chose 10 ohms there to minimise the current flowing through here. In other words, the uh, the current draw on um, the, the power supply. The VCC rail for this particular device is sitting here. Um, so our main battery voltage is coming in, through a 100 ohm resistor and then at this point a couple of decoupling capacitors uh, a 100 nanofarad capacitor in parallel with a uh, 100 microfarad capacitor um, and then the output coming in on pin 6 so pins 1, 5 and 8 uh, are not connected so not used so the output of the device here of the 5534 is then going through a, a second 47 microfarad capacitor just again if you're going to grab one out of the jump box you might as well grab two um, this is important as not to upset uh, the DC biasing on the 380. Um, and then that's being dumped across a, or sitting across a 10k ohm pot, which is acting as our main master volume for the whole setup. Um, I should say too, and I'll, I'll come back to that potentially later on if I remember, uh, RF uh, is variable. Um, I've set that, or I'm using currently a, uh, a 1k ohm trim pot. Uh, which will allow me then, once it's actually in the circuit, and I've got an understanding of how much gain I'm getting from the, the IF amps and the rest of the circuit, uh, I can then adjust this to get the overall gain for the, uh, the amplifier, noting that the 380 is fixed, fixed gain, apart from having the volume control pot here, of course. Anyway, so back to the 380, um, pin 2 is the input, pin 6 is our uh, inverting input, is tied to earth, um, similar arrangement with the VCC rail, but in this particular case, or well, the only difference is it's a 10 ohm resistor because the 380 draws um, significantly more current than this side, 
uh, and I don't want to um, exceed um, the power dissipation for that particular resistor there. Uh, and the output um, per the spec sheet, the spec sheet talks about using a 500 microfarad capacitor, so 470 microfarads is the closest one uh, for a standard value. And then the spec sheet also talks about having a combination of a 2.7 ohm resistor and a 100 nanofarad. So I've just grabbed out of the junk box, so I had quite a few of them, a 2.2 ohm resistor. And just followed the recommendations in the spec sheet sitting across the output there. And then to our standard 8 ohm 3 watt speaker that I had. So um, in that particular device there, uh, 1, 9 and 13 are not connected. And then the remainder are all sitting at ground. So... What do we want to talk about here? Maybe just zoom out a little bit. Uh, so we talked about the, the low pass filter here. So it's a low pass filter configuration. As we see, as frequencies increase, the higher frequencies are shunted to earth. So that's our configuration for a, um, a low pass filter. And if we were to depict that in a, uh, a simple graph, then uh, using this formula here, our frequency at the minus 3 dB point is given by 1 over 2 pi RC. So that's that point right there where the um, amplitude has reduced down to 0 0.7071 of max. So we say if max was 1, therefore 0 0.7071 um, is that point there. So we can solve for that now. So if we were to uh, set that to be 4 kilohertz, so just slightly higher than um, our max um, sort of uh, voice frequency, then we can solve for... Um, C, noting that, that R is around 51 ohms. So again, substituting in our values and rearranging the formula and solving for C. C comes out as 1 over 2 pi, uh, 51 times 4,000 hertz, uh, or 0.78 microfarads. So I'm just going to grab a 1 microfarad capacitor and use that from here to here. And we'll look at the effect of that in a sec. Um, I won't belabor point this here. We, we talked about the, the voltage gain of the 5534 being minus RF over RN, um, and that's a, a 1k ohm um, trim pot. Right, uh, the coupling capacitors, um, I had said that uh, at the lowest frequency I wanted those to be around that sort of 10 ohms, and noting that our capacitor reactance is 1 over 2 pi Fc, again we can now substitute in um, our known values put our C up there, put XC down here, and we can solve for C. So 1 over 2 pi, 300 hertz, remember it's the uh, lowest frequency of operation, times our desired 10 ohms, comes around at uh, 53 microfarads, so uh, we'll just grab the 47s out of the, uh, out of the box. So those are the two 47 microfarad capacitors that we see in the circuit. Right, so let's just pause there and um, set up. So uh, that's the amplifier down there um, set up. So two inputs I'm playing around with. So one input is coming from um, our SIGGEN and the other input is coming from uh, that old base rig that we we're playing around with a while back. So I'm just using that sort of a, to, to, to simulate a, a real world case and then using the SIGGEN to allow to, uh, to vary the frequency to just look at the frequency characteristics of the amplifier. Um, probably not too much to see here. Um, that's the 5534, the LM380 obviously. Uh, there goes that little 1K trim pot, which is acting as our feedback um, resistor between our output and our input. Uh, and sitting across that is a 100 uh, nanofarad capacitor, um, which at higher gain settings, you, it, it's not really, well, you don't really notice the effect, but certainly at when this is set up for very high gain, you can see on the, the negative going edges of the output signal, just a little bit of fur coming in there, some higher frequencies, uh, and when you put that capacitor there, it just cleans it right up. So uh, it's nice and easy just to leave that in circuit, and uh, you'll see that reflected in, in the schematic. Uh, what else to say here? Um, our VCC rail is coming in through there. Let's make sure that's nice and tight. Um, our two... Uh, 47 microfarad capacitors and there goes that one microfarad capacitor which is currently out of circuit and we'll look at the effect of that um, in a sec just to, to try and reduce the frequency or the upper frequency limit to around uh, 4 kilohertz. 
Uh, the output there is going to our speaker, which is conveniently buried in a few towels because it's extremely loud. Um, and our scope sitting across it. Um, so I won't go any more into that. So let's just sort of zoom out and have a look at the scope. And uh, I'll talk through what I'm doing as we go along. So, um, right, yeah, so what do we do here? Let's turn on the input. So that's one kilohertz. So let's just uh, put that into there. And that is our, our output there. So hopefully my voice is still loud enough to come over that speaker. So what I'm going to do here, I've, um, I'm going to adjust the output to be uh, maximum deflection across the screen. So that's two, four, six, eight divisions. And what I'm going to do here is have a look at the frequency response and then the effect of that one microfarad capacitor on the input which is acting as our RC low pass filter. So ideally once we have that capacitor in place we should see that amplitude drop down to approximately 5.7 divisions. So 5.7 divisions represents 0 point, 0 point, uh, 0.7071 of max. So we're going to drop down to there. So at the moment that capacitor is not in the circuit. We're currently at one kilohertz. That's two kilohertz, three kilohertz, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we're just starting to drop off there. So let's go back to one kilohertz, and we'll now put in that uh, one ohm, say again, one microfarad capacitor, and we'll just readjust that back up to our maximum which is around there somewhere and now let's uh, increase the frequency again and see what happens so that's one kilohertz two three four five six seven so let's come back to four so four kilohertz is there and if we were to count our divisions we're sitting at one two three four five five point two four six so roughly five point six in fact just a bit over so indeed now our 3 dB point from maximum is sitting at 4 kilohertz. So uh, I'll leave that in the final circuit, uh, noting that from a frequency point of view, our crystal filter is only 2.7 kilohertz wide anyway. So theoretically, there will also be um, some uh, bandwidth reductions or restrictions. It's the wrong terminology, but I'm sort of getting a bit tongue tied here. Uh, as a function of that crystal filter anyway, but uh, there's no harm in adding a little bit more here on the main amplifier. Um, so I think that's probably all to, to play around, that's just the volume control there. Um, we'll go back down to 1k, so 1 kilohertz. Um, so I think that's a bit noisy, let's just turn that volume down a bit. So uh, I'm not quite sure what else to cover off at this stage of the game. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. So just for interest sake, um, if we were now to disconnect the SIGGEN and insert this wire here, then that's the, the output of that radio over there. So we can tune, as you can see over here, we can tune the radio above and below. So that's now at 3.7 kilohertz. <laughs> which is the same as our SIGGEN, our RF SIGGEN in this particular case coming out. And then if we step it off to 3.7 or 3701, so 1kc away from that, we get our 1 kilohertz tone coming out of the product detector, which is now being amplified. Um, so that gives us a bit of a, uh, a real world um, view of how the amplifier may work in a, in a, a representative um, radio. But that radio is, is not the one we're building today. Today we're just starting off with the, like I say, the audio amplifier, then we'll start working through. So I'm going to knock it on the head there. Um, hopefully that was clear enough to sort of work out what my thinking was in terms of uh, why I chose um, certain values around the place. Um, like I say, I've, I've said many times, uh, you know, that's, this is the world according to me. It's not necessarily correct. Um, but, yeah, it, it seems to work, so... Um, so be it at the stage of the game. Well, I'll say 73s and put this up. 
um, and then best I go and do some gardening. Cheers all.